The Terrible Experience of Korean Rural Doctors Real Story in 2008. That was a few years ago. An outpatient call came from the emergency room. It was obvious that the nurse's voice on the phone was not calming and was trembling which was quite shocking. The emergency room nurse who called me couldn't explain the situation properly and couldn't control her emotions. It's DOA. I need a optometry. Her voice was so low that she couldn't even ask me what the hell was going on. I almost threw the phone and ran down to the emergency room, and when I arrived, something happened to I couldn't even bear the shock of I heard the detailed story of baby death later, as belows. A couple living on the outskirts of the city lived with their elderly mother, who had been singled out. The, the grandmother lost her husband early, and raised her only son on her own. Sitting down, the grandmother and daughter-in-law were farming the fields, and the son was driving a truck, and hauling goods. At the agricultural and fishery market. However my grandmother who had suffered a lot when she was young, has had a bit of dementia since a few years ago. But fortunately she kept her mind clear for about 20 hours a day, and lost herself completely for about 3 or 4 hours, in the evening, or at night, and was diagnosed with dementia. For these couples even the elderly with dementia, if they had complete dementia, 24 hours a day, their daughter-in-law would stick with them and help out. But usually they were fine, but this was not the case once in a while. So if my grandmother showed symptoms of dementia, I left her alone in her room, and locked the door, or my daughter-in-law stay by my side. At least it was fortunate that symptoms usually appeared at night. If you lock the door outside at night, you will not run away from home or do dangerous things except to pollute the, the room if there is a problem, and your son will be at home at night as well. It was because she was able to handle it even if her grandmother had a seizure. Anyway, the couple were ordinary people who worked hard with their old mother. One day, the daughter-in-law left the baby with her grandmother and went to the market. She didn't go to the market very often, but she had to stop by the market from time to time to buy some stuff. Even her grandmother cherished her grandchildren, whom she had seen late, and a child was the only happiness for both of them. When the daughter-in-law took the bus to the market to shop, and then returned home two hours later, the elderly mother, who was looking after the children, welcomed her that she had. She said, you worked hard. I'm hungry. Let's eat. I made gum soup to eat when you come. I had never bought beef bones recently. But I was puzzled because my grandmother had made beef rib soup. When I went into the kitchen, there was really steaming in the pot, and the smell of boiling gum soup was vibrating. When the daughter-in-law opened the lid of the big pot, she fainted on the spot. I am trying to record this terrible event as calmly as possible right now, but remembering that scene again makes my heart feel heavy, and my hands start to sweat. The hot pot contained a child, and the child came into the emergency room for an optometry. The dementia grandmother appears to have mistaken her sleeping grandson for a piece of meat. At that time, I had to see with my own eyes. The most terrifying scene of my life, and I would never want to experience it again. I examined the body of the child so swollen that I could not tell. The figure on the emergency room seat in the shock of freezing my own blood, and I had to record the optometry while looking back and forth, and I had to close my eyes at such a horrific scene, and to a collective panic state, and I had to read all the confusion of the nurses who were gathering at the station, and weeping loudly. The mother of the child fainted and was unconscious. And the grandmother was nowhere to be seen. I don't know what happened to these days after that. I didn't consciously try to figure out how it developed after that. However in the optometric record requested by the prosecution, the direct cause of death was cardiopulmonary arrest the preceding cause, respiratory failure due to drowning, and the indirect cause, full body burns and stamped my seal. It must have been terrible for the rest of the family to suffer as a result of that incident. Moreover when she regained her senses, what kind of pain would the old woman feel when she found out that she had made the grandson she loved so much? In addition, the cruel and terrible pain that the mother and father of the child would have to endure for the rest of their lives. What would it be like? I couldn't even imagine. I hope that the family will not be disbanded, but I do not know what will happen.
as I am writing this article did I write that I need measures to deal with dementia and other geriatric disease. Or are we saying that this is the extreme harshness we can experience in life? Also while I write this down without looking back, in order not to remember the gruesome scenes that came to mind. While writing this article, I can't even decide whether it was a good thing I posted this or not, but one thing is clear. The thing is that life has been so cruel without any countermeasures. This real story was recorded on this book in 2011, by rural doctor experienced terrible accident.